Welcome back to school, everybody. <laughs> I've turned off our waiting room for us. Um, welcome, welcome folks. Um, so um, here in California, um, many kids are heading back to school and in preparation for that, um, wanted to just have, give us a chance to think about if, if I want nature journaling to be something that happens, you know, um, what, what's the, the, the best way kind of starting off year to um, get some momentum with my nature journaling in my class, how to keep that going, um, how to justify that um, to, to myself and, 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 and others um, and resources and, and strategies that um, you have found are going to be effective. And it's possible also just to, to think about, by, just by having this discussion, that it will reinforce our um, being able to, to do this uh, more deeply and more consistently. Um, so maybe anything that you are planning to do to make it happen this year um, that would be a strategy worth sharing, um, what's worked in the past, before we kind of launch into that, um, I just have been kicking around here and came up with a few ideas and wanted to, to share those with people, maybe just as a get us started. Um, so I'm going to um, maybe take, we'll see if I can do five minutes and um, uh, drop a whole bunch of ideas in here. And then we're going to um, bounce into a a, a deep discussion on that. Um, Ivea, I whenever I try to do a, a, a one hour class, it usually ends up being two hours. I'm gonna try to do this in five minutes. Can you tell me when I am when I get to four? Yes. And I'm actually gonna try to be succinct. Sound good? You got this. All right. So here we go. Um, here's a bunch of ideas in no particular order. Um, Right. The first is, this is my favorite Venn diagram. Um, this is um, the intersection of, in the United States, of science curriculum meets English language arts meets math. And what's interesting to note is that in the corner, the middle of this, where they all meet, is, um, is, all this stuff about kind of dealing with evidence. So I, making arguments from evidence um, and thinking about our, uh, the reasoning of others and our own and um, reading and writing and speaking based in evidence. So nature journaling is all about the evidence. Um, we are in the business of, of of going out and looking at real things, and then we're thinking about it and trying to figure out what is going on there. Um, when we are doing these things, we are uh, we are addressing standards in all three of these areas. And so this is, I mean, that's a big part of what we do with nature journaling. And it is um, very explicitly doing what is showing up in our, in all these different um, areas of standards, at least here in the United States. And so we want to start thinking of nature journaling, not as kind of a sidecar um, that you can do once you've finished your math and your science and your ELA, but something that can be authentically integrated into these areas. Um, so if you want to find this Venn diagram, just you can type in NGSS um, Venn diagram or uh, science ELA Venn diagram. This will pop up on your screen. There's a few different versions of it. But this I find very, um, really, very, very useful. Another thing I want to point out uh, to people is if you're kind of getting yourself kind of uh, gear ready, um, 
Bear Books are one of my favorite low cost nature journal sources. And um, there's two versions. There's the paperback version, and then there's the hardcover version. Um, I'm going to click over here on books, and we're going to sort of see uh, what they have. We're going to go here into it. Well, that's not we're going to shop now. Um, um, in this, they've got different sizes. These large ones are, are, are large. The one that um, so the one that is big is sort of an eight and a half by uh, an 11 size thing. The, I think, is it in here? The one that I usually use with students is it, it, it's, it ends up being about this big. There's maybe 24 pages in the thing, white, hardbound. And um, this is not wanting to load. Oh, there we go. Um, Nope, still not there. Uh, I'm going to go one more. Um, but these these are. Uh, let's see where do we go? Oh, here it is. Yeah, this is this is it. The the portrait blank bear book. Um, there's right. item yep. number twenty seven oh five. Um, ah, that's four minutes. Yeah, four minutes. Ah, okay. Um, so that is a, a, an awesome tool. Um, I just ordered 31 of them for um, Amelia's class. Um, and what I'm getting um, her teacher to do is to use the Nature Journal co uh, connection. So here oh, we're over on johnmuirlaws.com. This is the Nature Journal connection. Um, we're going to make a total of 40 episodes so that if you want to do one each week of the school year, you can. Each one has a little bit of information and a little exercise that you can do. And they're kind of put in an order that will build nature journaling skills. Um, these are accessible, they're fun, and there's a lot of, of, of skills that are very, very sort of very useful nature journaling skills that you can you'll find in these um and uh so i want to to sort of remind people that if you're that this is a really nice kind of low-hanging fruit thing that you can um you like how do i get nature journaling started just show one of these 15 minute videos one a week give the students that prog that that um the the, the project in it and um, and you are you're in great shape. Um, other resources on my website, I have this. This is teacher um, resources page. Um, so there is the nature journaling curriculum. This book, how to teach nature journaling. You can buy the real book, or you can also get a free download of the entire thing. So those resources are. Um, are available to everybody. We have this forum. Um, we have, um, let's see. Um, those are, I guess those are my, my, my major things I wanted to point out. Um, also, if you are in an area and you're looking for an ally to help you do nature journaling in your, uh, in your class, I suggest that you check out this uh, kind of local mentors page. You may be able to find that there's somebody in your area that might be able to um, help with nature journaling education in uh, near where you live. Um, final page, um, uh, Emily Ligren and I have a website called How to Teach Nature Journaling. Um, in this, you can find those field activities uh, that you find in the How to Teach Nature Journaling book. Um, here just available as, as a website. So um, when you go to uh, this, um, you know, here are all these, these different, these are ones that are kind of good at getting started ones. Um, timelines, you, you click on any one of these and it brings up a, um, a little video of that activity being taught by a teacher. So you can see somebody uh, doing the activity and then you can download the blueprints for that activity from that button right there. 
And so those are um, just a bunch of, of, of resources that are available to all of us. And I guess that was probably seven minutes, right? Hey, I got in under 10. And they were all excellent resources. So thank you for that. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Um, so team, let's crowdsource this day. Um, we're going back to school. Um, are there things that you are excited to do um, about kind of upping your game um, and um, for, for making Nature Journal work uh, even better for you or maybe for your first time this year? Um, if so, we want to hear about that because also if you tell us about it, um, then partway through the year, we'll be saying, so how's that going? And it will kind of help you do it. Sometimes just talking about what your plans are um, can help make it happen. And you might have a really good idea that's going to um, help motivate other folks. Um, also, are there things that you have found in the past that helped you get started and stay consistent? Um, would love to hear those thoughts. Um, Let's think first about getting started. Um, Barnest, um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what you're thinking about um, with the, 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 the timing? Um, you're thinking about kind of doing things um, once a week love to kind of hear what you're envisioning um, with that. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I teach high school biology, and I also teach an AP environmental science class. And we're just going to, um, hi, everybody. I teach high school biology. Um, we're going to, I started, I started a little bit of nature journaling for the first time last year in the classroom with just kind of the sketches and, and really um, knowing how that really helped a lot of students to understand the material a little bit deeper. So this year I'm all, this is, we're gonna do this once a week. So I'm hoping to go outside and, um, and just cross my fingers and make this happen and try if I get 80% of the students doing 80% of the work, I'm, 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 I'm doing well. So. Um, but it really is going to be the same um, lessons that I've done here. A, a, um, first item will be having leaves in the classroom that we're going, everyone comes through, pick two items and do a compare and contrast in the classroom and then slowly start moving outside. So that's me. So you're going to get them. I, I like how you're kind of... Um sort of titrating um, the experience to them. So you're going to start in the classroom. They're like when they get new journals and these new tools, that can be that can be a lot. And then you're going to, so you're then going to have in the controlled classroom space, do something with it. So they're already kind of have a few ideas of what I do with my journal the first time they come out into the field. Yes, I, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping to just small, one small step at a time one small just even just practice doing circles and lines that's happening tomorrow and then next week they'll be coming in on a wednesday and there'll be two leaves or there'll be a ton of leaves and they'll be selecting two items to go sit down and do the do the compare and contrast right the uh, thing one thing two and then and then just slowly kind of integrate it so that we're going outside because my goal is to go outside Nice. That's that is that is that is huge. And the, the first time, and and well, also what I like is that you're you're being you're going to be cons trying to get yourself consistent with that. The first time you take students outdoors, there's a big slice of chaos. Yeah. Um, but by through repetition, that outdoor experience can be a really kind of useful extension of kind of your. your the students realize like, oh, when we go outside, we're, we're actually still following your, 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 your guides and your cues. 
and I'm going to go small. There's um, a set of stairs that's not too far from my front door and or from the classroom door. So we're just the first time we're just only going to go just to those stairs, which is actually our fire, you know, drill as well kind of a thing. So we're going to go to a place that we've already been to and we're going to sit down and kind of learn the process. And even if it's just for five minutes and then come back in and then hopefully build on that each time so we can go explore the campus and even, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I think too much too quick would be bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that sounds like a, 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 a really thoughtful way to approach it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Thank you. Billy, uh, Billy Joe, could I get you to share um, with us um, the, the resources that you um, just um, uh, put up there? I don't know if you are able to, are you able to do a screen share? Oh, uh, great question. Yes. Uh, um, maybe I can't, uh, no, because I'm not okay, a host. Hold on. You are now co-host Billy Joe. Uh, okay. There we go. Uh, let me just make sure that this is, yeah, okay. So we developed starting last year. Um, so I'm, uh, for everybody, most people know who I am by now, but I'm up in Canada. So this is based on the Ontario curriculum um, because within each uh, province, the curriculum is slightly different. Um, but we created this website last year when everything kind of went crazy with COVID. And we were trying to figure out how to support teachers and parents when we were trying to figure out how this whole online thing was going to work. Um, so we've broken it down into grades, uh, kindergarten, and then into the different um, curriculum as well. Um, and so with Jack's permission, I have linked, uh, and I'm currently linking some of his activities from um, him and Emily's uh, website, how to teach nature journaling into our curriculum pieces as well. But many of the, um, uh, sorry, just one second, many of the um, activities that we already had on the site um, can definitely be used. So this year I went through and I sort of did nature journaling. I noticed, I wonder, it reminds me of like an intro. Um, this is where I, you know, link it back to um, Jack's page. Uh, Beth Ann Burton um, gave me permission to use some of the stuff from her website as well, teaching uh, nature journaling for all students. And then as you kind of go down, you know, we have an activity on forest fires. Um, and you can actually, I just made a note at the bottom that this can be incorporated um, with nature journaling as well, because what I really wanted to do this year with any of the classes um, that we uh, were working with, really wanted them to understand that nature journaling isn't just like a one of, we really wanted them uh, to be able to look at it as a tool. So we've even looked at, um, speaking with the social studies curriculum. Um, and so for us, you know, grade four is, you know, heritage and identity. So in that first paragraph, you know, we talked about nature journaling as a tool that can be used to compare maps and photographs of what things once looked like, what treaty lands um, that they're currently working on, what does that mean, and nature journaling, the area that they're in. So again, just really incorporating it into every possible facet of you know, what is happening. Um, and so that's kind of been um, our goal um, with this website. And we've made it um, in a way that there's a few things that are, are board specific, but for the most part, anyone can use any of the activities that we've created and, you know, incorporate that in, in any way um, they, they can sort of thing. So there's lots of extras, um, sorry, the, there we go. So there is stuff on citizen science here. So we've let the teachers know about different programs that are going on in Ontario um, through different apps that they can use, iNaturalist, Turtle Tally, there's Bat Watch, all these different sorts of things. Um, we have uh, Nature Drawing, which is um, a girl that we uh, work with actually created videos like how to draw videos um and so they can those can be incorporated as little extra art lessons things like that so lots of stuff on there that uh, anyone can use so that's what we have there <laughs> uh billy joe this is this is fantastic yeah it's a work in progress like it definitely 
uh, is not complete um, and it is changing uh, daily uh, as we, you know, make changes, add new things, um, you know, kind of go through all of those different pieces. Um, but it is a work in progress and um, it has been a, a little bit of a labor of love for uh, for most of us um, that are working sort of on it and through it. So I want to thank everybody who's allowed us to, you know, uh, use some of their resources um, like yourself and Beth Ann. Marley has given us permission. I don't have his stuff up on there yet, but just a really great way to continue to, you know, really immerse everyone into this amazing community and, and really see that there's so many amazing resources that if we can be a hub for that, um, then I, I think it's pretty awesome. Is this a .com or a .org? It is actually a Google site. Oh. So we've done it through a Google, uh, a Google site, which is a little bit different. So that's why it doesn't have like a www on it. Um, so we do it all through Google. So yeah. So, but, but if I put in PDSB learning naturally, it'll come up, it'll come up it'll in come your up. search engine. Yep. It'll come up. Absolutely. All right. This is, this is really, really useful. Yeah. You're yeah. So anybody can use it. So you would just take it, whatever it is on the drop downs. We have like a little brief introduction of what the curriculum is for us, but you would just use the curriculum in your area and by all means, like it's open, it's a public site. Um, and like I said, there's a few little things that are very specific to Peel, um, but not enough that that I would think that you couldn't use it um, or find a, a different resource somewhere else sort of thing. But yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hey, fantastic. Thank you Thanks. so much Thanks. for putting this together. Yeah. And, um, thank you so much for making this publicly available. Yeah, thank you. Great. Um, so let's take a look at Valerie. Um, Sorry, I, did I, I stop I, sharing? Am I stopped sharing now? Like it's not up there anymore, is it? Oh, that, that, that's right. I thought you. I thought you said. I thought. I, I thought that you were done. So I was. I am done. So did you? Oh, did I, you I should have. That was rude of me. I'm sorry for. No, I, that was me. That was all me. Um, no, that's perfect. It's gone. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't have to do something, but you made it go away. So that's perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Um, I'd love to bring um, Aisha in on this. Um, I saw that you had some thoughts that you wanted to share. Oh. <laughs> I was just thinking, do I remember my thoughts? I hope Jack doesn't call on me. Okay, um, we, can, we can call on that's you later okay. if you want. It came back to me. Um, the woman who was talking, thank you, Billy Joe. Those look amazing. I just sent it to my Canadian colleague who used to teach with me, and he said he was inspired by me to get his kids out more. And I'm like, well, have you added in nature journaling? Because it's all set up for you in Canada. <laughs> Curriculum right. connections, right? Um, the woman who was talking before high school, I just wanted to uh, do a shout out for her taking into account the diversity of comforts with nature and that she's scaffolding that way because it's not just comfort with drawing or using a nature journal, you know, as I'm learning from talking to teachers who are way more urban than I was, even though I had that exposure in San Francisco, um, you cannot launch out there. Uh, nature journaling with a good number of kids sometimes, uh, depending on the community. So I love how she's going to bring nature inside and slowly step it out and slowly step it out. And I've made note if my teaching community changes. I was just in conversation with um, a high school teacher locally who's going to bring kids from sort of inner city East Oakland out to this nature area. She's like, they're not the kinds of kids I could take backpacking. I can't even take them camping. Maybe we'll try glamping, you know, and she was a good reminder of little by little. So I'm just, you know, shouting that out there as something for us all to think about going back to school. And even with, the other thing point I wanted to make, it's coming back to me, is uh, one thing I did because I felt like part of it, especially working uh, with my fifth graders, when they're starting to be at that funky, like nothing's cool anymore um, stage was um, buy-in on their part to Nature Journal and put some heart into it. And what I found was after 
one or two sessions of introducing them to it. I actually introduced them to the idea that scientific illustration is a valid career. It's like people make money doing this, right? And I shared examples of well-known people from the past. I shared some of Jack's work. I mean, I just shared, I showed his Sierra Nevada book. I'm like, look, people who can put whole books together on this, you know, and they were, I just saw this like, whoa, this isn't just an exercise she's having us do. Yeah. This can be because they're starting to be on that cusp, right? And I'm sure it'd be even more in middle school, but fifth grade was my cutoff of teaching. That cusp of like, what, where does this lead to in the adult world? This is not just a school exercise. So I wanted to share that. I think I brought that in, like I said, second or third session. I was sort of feeling it out. Um, something that you're 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 bringing up there i think it is the 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 buy-in piece and that this is authentically a useful thing it's not like i i just want you to do this worksheet while i'm doing a different project that this is this is a critical enough um process and project for um for you know, adults also do this i'm also doing it with you um, I, I just ordered a set of bear books for my daughter's class. And so I have one for each student and the teacher, because when the students are doing it, the teacher is also doing it. And that really just kind of brings home the message of that this is this sort of, this is a real high percentage thinking activity. My, my experience is also that, you know, kids, once they kind of really kind of see the size of the cloth, they go like, Okay. And useful. Nice. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, uh, Debbie uh, Kersley, I saw a, um, a note from you in the, in the chat. Um, and I thought that that was, oh, you're talking about using um, the unexpected phenomena rather than controlling and planning it or anything. I think that that idea both opens up lots of possibilities for, um, for doing more nature journaling because you don't, you can realize you can go out and there will be something. And then what do you do with that something that you find? Um, and it kind of, it brings in people into a more kind of active part of thinking of doing science rather than just being a lab tech. Um, uh, could you uh, expand on that idea a little bit for us? Um, I think that that's, this, is a, this is a very high percentage idea about how we kind of go about. Um, could I, is it all right if I spotlight you? All right. Hey there. Hi. Thank you for being with us. Um, I, think, I think it a lot of it, I got um, confidence from the last time I came to the forum, really, because we were talking about that kind of thing really and just letting the phenomenon around I think after I spoke to you um about you were talking about that um that approach I think the next class that I had we would I was really focused on teaching them something really specific about drawing a specific flower and then this little fledgling goldfinch dropped because I do it in my garden it just sort of plopped out of a hedge right into the just like the leg of the table and um it was just the whole class stops and I sort of almost had this dilemma of like, oh but we should continue with and then I obviously I got over that really quickly and then we just spent the whole we sort of rescued it and you know and then the next week I got them to do drawings of um what we saw and look at pictures of goldfinches and we you know we all found out because we didn't know what it was so we had to identify it and then we talked about drawing birds and I hadn't I hadn't done bird drawing with them at all because it's not really something that I know that much about so I was discovering it with them and I, I just always find that when I'm discovering it with them they see that I'm being really genuine and they get really really excited and I just really notice that difference in the sort of motivation so I'm just trying to just keep with that and I was going to say one of the things I started doing a lot with them is um 
I just make, I got it, I saw somebody doing it on one of the forums, but I sort of make lots of sheets with um, lots of small squares. So I prep them because it, it's not really long enough for them to prep, but in the future I'll get them to prep when they understand what it is. But I give them the, the bare squares. This was good when I did lots of little squares. And then I just say, right, go out and just fill, find, find what you're interested in and just fill the squares. It might be one thing that they do lots of different elements of, or it might just be, and some of them are really quick. So it gives them all their own timing because some of them just go around and fill all the squares really quickly. And some of them just do one square really, really, really detailed, but they've got that choice. They don't have to fill all the squares and then they come back and then they just, they do a little, you know, they take everyone to their, where they've done that square. And most of them are finding these tiny little intricate things and it's, it's my garden and I haven't even noticed them before. So they, it's a bit of a competition for them because I genuinely haven't seen some of the things and they find these odd things that are like, they found a little fun, um, bacteria called a star jelly. And I thought they were, you know, I was dismissive because it looked like a little bit of mud on the ground, but they're so looking from a different perspective to me. And then because they found this star jelly, they seem to have like microscopic eyes or something, the kids. So they could see that I was really genuinely amazed, you know, and I was saying, you know, you're just showing me things in my garden that I've never seen. So I'm just, I just feel the kind of joy and the motivation they get when I take that approach. I'm not a school teacher, so it's easier for me. I'm not following a curriculum. Mm -hmm. home educated children. So I appreciate you can't do that in a curriculum that's that easily. But um, I think just that approach, I've heard other people talking about it, like Billy Joe before, where you're, you're discovering it at the same time as them. Um, so yeah, I'm just really trying to focus on that for autumn. <laughs> Yeah, I, and also it sort of seems like you've got, you're, you're, you're sort of trusting nature that if you show up for nature, nature is going to show up for you. Yeah. Um, you don't have to have this full curriculum figured out. You're going to go out there and you're going to find, through your direct observation, you're going to find an interesting phenomenon. Mm -hmm. But you have to be very trusting to do that, you know? It's yeah, difficult. and, and, and to, to, you can practice this every time you go out nature drill. Um, you kind of go out into a place and you say to yourself, you know, there's something really interesting happening out here. And what I want to do is find it. The, the other really quick thing that just to say about that, that I'm using is that I'm going, I'm nature journaling myself all the time. And I, I really, really notice that. I mean, that's, it's obvious, but it's a big motivation for me, you know, that I, I know that if I go out and nature journal myself on my own, when, when the kids turn up, I'm really sort of like, come on, we're going to do this. And, but if I don't do that practice myself, you know, I sort of forget how exciting it is. So I think that's just crucial, really, um, for me anyway. And, and, it, you, and, know, you let them, and you let them see you doing that. Yeah. And um, the, the way I started nature journaling with kids is I was nature journaling on my breaks when I was working at an outdoor education school. And all the kids saw me doing that and wanted to do it with me during their free time hmm. and so i realized like oh why don't you just wrap this into your lessons and that whole can of worms opened up like crazy hmm. De debbie thank you so much for those thoughts and ideas oh thank you um let me jump back over to the gallery um, um any other thoughts or, or ideas? Uh, Laura, what's going to be happen over there in your uh, neck of the woods with your students this year? I'm, you are often scheming things, and I would love to hear <laughs> about your, 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 your schemes for this upcoming year. Well, so we're supposed to be going face to face, and but we have a mask mandate, so I want to be outside as much as we can. Where we won't have to do that um and i have uh this uh, a garden space that um was a pollinator garden and now i'm trying i've been working on making it into a native pollinator garden and so um i am going to assign each student to a grid a four by four grid within 
the garden and that is going to be their nature spot and we're going to do um i'm planning on doing all their nature journaling in and around the garden um and uh we're doing it with an overall project kind of goal in mind of they're going to catalog the plants and if they can animals that are in there um they're going to identify them and uh, try to determine what's native, what's not. Um, and um, then we will actually, from the native plants, we'll collect seeds. And we are, they're going to make, contribute to what is going to be, a, I don't I have to come up with a good word for it, but um, the project is going to pass from one semester to another. So they are going to use their, will do a digital upload of their nature journal and their documentation of their, their square, and then it's going to be inherited. That information will be available to the next student who has that, that Part of the grid and they're going to make proposals like okay i think we may you know you might want to you know pull up this one because it's not native and maybe put something like this in here because the soil is like this and this would be good and so it's for next the fo following semester those people are going to take the seeds that the first semester collected and try to start some plants so that by the end of the semester they can plant um, new material because there are there is space right now um, especially because i have quite a few non-native pollinators that i have to get rid of um, and so for me one of my overwhelming goals of this was uh, we focus a lot on human impacts in my class, which they're elementary education majors and juniors in college. Um, I wanted them to be able to do something proactive, positive, be able to say, I did that. I contributed to that. Because um, it's the only thing that's kept me sane. Well, one of the few things that's kept, kept me sane for this, out there. And, um, you know, there's all sorts of things we can go from there. They can they could do um, document visits by pollinators. There's all sorts of things that different classes could do in the future. Um, but we're going to start very similarly with um, with just looking at the leaves of two different plants in their square, right? Yep. And then, so, but what I want to do. My class is an hour and 50 minutes, and I want us to spend half an hour outside. Each, Every day each we can. Session. That's cool. So that would be an hour a week. And then, you know, I, I'll have ways of making up lost instructional time by having them do a flipped classroom. But um, I just, I'll have, I, I need a plan for the people who are afraid of bees. <laughs> because we have actually quite a lot of pollinators. And I don't know, we may go out less and less the colder it gets, not as hardy as Billy Joe. Um, That's right. And, uh, but, but then we're gonna create a space. We've got, I've got some ideas for experiments that they can, we can do inside with plants and they can still do the sketching. I had them do a plant, watch a plant grow and sketch it in previous semesters. So we can do that inside and that that can be part of part of what they document um, is because they, they, part of what they're trying to understand is what is it about plants that make them suitable for a specific place and suitable for certain pollinators, right? That parts have, structures have functions and they can all match up, so. so You've been thinking a lot about structure and kind of giving these students scaffolding to do their activities within. That's something that I think is really important for the success of nature journaling programs, especially as you're getting started, sort of down the line when students all know 
what to do, um, you can just sort of say like, grab your journal, go out and do something cool with it. Um, but this, this sort of, this, this kind of clear scaffolding, um, here, uh, Laura's come up with a lot of ideas specifically um, for her location. Um, there also are sort of general ideas and scaffolding that you can find in the How to Teach Nature Journaling book um, or the activities in the Nature Journal Connection. Yes, and I, so last, those people who are, those folks who are new, last semester, I did use a lot of things, but we were all remote. So they were all going to their own spots. Um, and I actually, this became an equity issue, I think. At least I had students who didn't either had lives or were in such situations that they didn't feel that they could do it. And they did not do the nature journal. And, you know, they didn't do that activity. And that's why I want to put it into a situation where, um, I'm providing the space, at least to start. And if we stay on campus, there's lots of um, natural spaces in and around here that they can go on to do other things, but we literally are, it's right outside our door. So I'm really excited to be able to go out there. I have spent <laughs> hundreds, if not a thousand plus hours out there in the last year. So I am, and it's just, it's a wonderful chance for them to be outside experiencing nature and experiencing the benefits of being in nature. Even if we're not going off into, you know, you can still see buildings. So. The, um, just sort of um, on the line of um, bringing kids out and sort of tying into um, uh, kids who are afraid of bees um, or uh, uh, or yellow jackets in, in my area is is the big consideration because those are they, they, they're, they're a little bit more ornery um, they can get away with stinging you and not dying so yes. there's sort of there's less invested about attitude like with, with, with the honeybee if it's going to sting you like i figure i had it coming <laughs> um with a yellow jacket uh it's you know maybe it was having a bad day <laughs> um but the i don't know if people are aware of this stuff but um i just want to show you um this crazy game changer um thing um that i first bumped into these um when i was teaching at an outdoor education school there are these little kind of um these little swabs where you break the ampule um and then dab 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 on the kid's skin and this is the same thing that is in a um in sort of a, a wipe form but the effect of this on the yellow jacket sting is instantaneous. And you're, um, you know, I've, uh, I've, oops, I didn't want to go there. Um, so this stuff works crazy good. And you'll have a kid who will go, go from like, ah, 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 to be like, oh, that's cool. How did that work? Right. Um, the, uh, my, my, my daughter got a yellow jacket underneath her shirt and had five stings and was really not pleased with the whole situation, busted out these things and boop, 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 boop. And then, you know, just immediately she was like, okay, that's really cool. I want to, could I um, put some of those in my backpack? Um, so safety tip, if you want to be like the magic outdoor educator who kind of uh, makes the, the sting pain disappear. Um, you know, the, uh, what I, what I usually do is hit the kid with that thing. And then you, um, then I give them, uh, one of those little pads to put in their pocket and say, like, if it comes back, just 
give it a dab again um, in about an hour. Um, that stuff is really good. So. Well, you do need to uh, know what the rules are in terms of your school, just saying, in terms yes. of whether or not you can give things to them. But mine are adults, so they can decide for themselves. I've no, never- no, And, and with, with adults, what, what you can do, the, what, when I took the wilderness medicine classes, um, what they would do is where you cannot prescribe medication. You can't, you know, you don't want to deliver medication without a license. This is a general no-no. Um, the, what you can do is you can put it on the rock next to them and you say, this is this really interesting product. It, you know, gets rid of the, the, the sting almost immediately. Um, I think if I were in your situation, I would take one of these. I would break that ampule and dab, dab, dab it on my skin. <laughs> right yeah I'm, and, I'm okay with saying this is a box of resources <laughs> i think they'd be they, they'd be okay with that but i've never had anybody get stung out there we have such an amazing array of different pollinators out there and then we have other things so the one that was really really scary was uh i we have a cicada killer killing it's big um, and then I actually saw a hummingbird, I think it was a hummingbird, yeah, hummingbird moth, which is beautiful and amazing. So, I mean, we've seen some really incredible things out there, but my, my daughters are the, ah, it's going to sting me. It's like, they, they're not, a, they're not going to sting you for the most part, unless you step on them, you're good. Yeah, that's that is that's useful. The um, it it's um, see if you're when I was at um, uh, I think it was at the Walker Creek Outdoor School. We had um, you you can you can make um. If your site makes a relationship with a doctor, that person can be the, sort of the advising physician for, for your site. And um, they can give you um, permission under their license to administer these sorts of things. When I, um, we did that at the um, Academy of Sciences, we had uh, somebody at UCSF who uh, was willing to be our um, uh, sort of advising physician. Um, and then we just stayed within the, the, the protocols of the Wilderness Medicine um, Institute, um, which, is a, uh, which is now under the National Outdoor Leadership School. Um, that, uh, but this is still a bit of a digression from first day of school. But um, yeah, thank you for that, um, the, the, the thoughts about your, your program. I think it's really kind of cool to see that, you know, th this, uh, Laura's been doing this for, for a while. And so she's kind of fine tuning strategies um, that she's um, using. So if you don't have, you know, plans, you can use some of the things like that Billy Joe is showing um, or some of these other resources for kind of getting going. Um, I'm going to jump back to the gallery view. Um, and is there anybody else that has um, thoughts? Oh, um, Catherine, sorry, didn't see you earlier. Good to see you. And you are live. Hi. Um, I am about to start teaching in a couple of weeks um, in a school garden where I will have 300 kids cycling through during the week. So right now my mind is on a lot of things, but one is um, kind of the whole Delta variant and how am I gonna keep things clean? And cause my, you know, when you have that many different groups of kids coming into a space, I've always just 
let them use the same tools as the last group, but now I'm I'm kind of worried about that. So, and I'm thinking about having everybody sanitize their hands and coming and spray everything off. Um, so I was just wondering if anybody had any suggestions about that. And as far as like, you know, I, I'm gonna have everybody come out with their nature journal and a pencil, but in the past I've always, provided watercolors and markers and things for them to use. And, and so I, I don't know if I wanna have just monochromatic nature journals this year or, or what we're gonna do. So thinking about logistics of being outdoors this year with potential for Delta variant, does anybody have any thoughts, suggestions, or ideas on that? Yeah, I figure I'll just have some sort of, you know, alcohol and water spray at the tables and then um, I can spray things down in between groups or I can ask the kids to spray their own stuff. And I think I also have this recipe for hand sanitizer that I made for my own family with um, aloe and rubbing alcohol. And so it's really gentle on hands. And so I guess I was thinking about asking everybody just to sanitize their hands every time they go to a different station. Because so I have stations in the garden that the, the classes move through. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Amy Butler, is your uh, comment on this topic? Great, I'm gonna bring you in. I'd love to bring in Amy here. Yeah. Thank you for Hi. being with us. Hi, Catherine. I'm Hi. curious to know what state you're in. I'm in California. You're in California. Okay, so I work in the public school systems here in the state of Vermont, and um, I work exclusively outdoors with public school teachers. And you know, as we're reopening and all the new, all the newness and all the changes and everything, um, I'm just curious to know what possibly has shifted in California for us here in Vermont. Um, we're we're not we're not being required to sanitize. Um, you know, materials anymore, even outdoors or not. I think it's a great idea to have kids sanitize their hands in between use and to have their masks on, but I don't feel that um, it would be necessary for you to have to actually sanitize your equipment, but you'd want to check in with your, with the state of California. Uh, here in Vermont, we, for the public schools, we're all reopening this week and our students actually don't even have to wear masks outdoors. And we don't have to socially distance. That has a lot to do with our vaccine rate and how high it is. Um, everyone will be masked indoors, of course. Um, but when we're outside, which the teachers that I'm working with are spending a lot more time outside because they're being supported by their public schools to spend more time outside because it's a safe and healthy alternative. Um, but I just wanted to share that to to look yeah, at your as far, look at as your far state. As I know. I think masks are optional outside, um, but I kind of want to be super careful. Yeah, I think the hand sanitizing is great. I mean, and just in general anyways, with that many children with 300 kids coming through, that's a lot, yeah. but. We also have a, a rich tradition of eating out of the garden. And I think <laughs> I am gonna have to curtail that right now because hands to mouths is probably. Yeah, and then how do you figure all that out with everyone yeah. um, taking their masks off and all that? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to share well, thank some you. thoughts from Vermont. From the other side of the country. That's thank you so much for that, Amy. Yep. Um, and and let's just also let's all remember that the guidelines will be changing. Um, so the guidelines are sort of based on what the current evidence is, and as that landscape changes, those guidelines will change. Um, and so just expect that by being outdoors you're ahead of the curve there. Right. So that's making a big difference. Just the fact that you're having these lessons outdoors, that's gonna make a big, big difference. Um, and then I would, you know, just precautionary principle, you know, err on, I, I would be conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, the logistics of like wiping down tools um, sounds, difficult right especially if you're doing if it's a kind of a, 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 a liquidy thing and then you know they're picking up more dirt and yeah um, yeah they're gonna get gross yeah. the uh 
the but so I, I would see I would look at what the the guidelines are for that. And also, Amy, thank you so much for those comments and ideas from Vermont. Um, let's bring um, Aisha uh, in on this. Hi there. Hi, just um, wanted to pop in with Catherine there for a minute. Um, Catherine, last year I was in a similar situation as you. I know things are constantly changing, but in terms of the cleaning materials, I was also seeing what was happening across the school itself. PE balls were not being wiped down between groups and stuff. So I was like, there's no point in me doing things if it's not a school-wide policy that every piece of outdoor equipment is wiped between kids. Right. So just, just, I was just playing, kind of following like, okay, whatever the logic is, you know, that's where we are in terms of exposure. And the food thing was a big thing for me too, because of course the kids love coming to the garden to the eat. And after the first two weeks of being personally freaked out, what I finally did was we had very set times to eat. It was either when they first came in with washed hands and I'd be like, these first five, 10 minutes are free time to go nibble on something and you're gonna pick what you want. You're not gonna share like we always used to promote, like share the pea pod or the limited resources, that's out the door. And then you're gonna go and find your own corner, take your mask down and eat. Or we did it the very last five minutes. You've done with all your stations, go wash your hands if you're gonna eat. And I found like within two weeks of coming, everybody was down with it, was really good. Even the kindergartners were off in their little corner with their mask down, stuffing you know a piece of French sorrel into their mouth and then putting their mask back up. And I was mm -hmm. impressed. Because I was like, adults are doing less well with this than kids. So we were able to keep eating. So I just wanted to share that. Like I just narrowed down the windows of time and made sure it was at a clear hand washing time or sanitizing whatever's yeah. more accessible. That's, and well, and would... even, even with the smelling, right? If you have a sensory garden, we would have occasional smell activities, yeah. but it'd be yeah. like, we're all going to investigate lemon verbena today as the first thing, your hands are clean but you're gonna pick your leaf and move away. Mm -hmm. And then you can come back and share what your experience was with the scent. And, you know, it slowed things down, but that's well, what maybe we can, we can use some antiseptic plants like lavender, rosemary <laughs> to wipe our hands off. Yep, that's a nice thing for them to learn too. Yeah. And I did a lot of the plants that are calming it was like, oh, are we anxious about COVID? Let's go smell some lavender. This is a good healing plant for you. Oh, let's go smell lemon balm. Yeah. We, did, we did stop all tea making. I was uh -huh. like, there's no way yeah. we're doing tea or lemonade. Yeah, we did any, tea. any liquids, but the little but the little nibbles, I felt like we could keep doing. You no, know, we used to have a whole like people preparing, you know, ingredients, putting ingredients together and making something and that uh, that we're not gonna do. And then passing no. it out to everybody. No, but, but the individual maybe the nibbling. nibbling. Yeah, the nibbling is kind of more fun in a way too. It is. They love it. I was like, you can make your yeah. own individual little top yeah. or burrito, burrito, right? And put yeah. in this, that, and the other. And no, nobody else gets to share it today. Just yeah, that's so much fun with the flower petals and all the strange things that they can put in there. My kids would wrap it with scallion leaves. Oh, cool. I thought it was, they made some disgusting combinations, but they liked them. <laughs> so, and they got, veg, they got veggies the into them. They got veggies into them. I'm like, carry on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, Aisha, thank you so much. That's really, really proud. It's nice to, that's what's cool about this group. There's going to be like somebody else is like, ah, another garden educator. Here's what's happening in my garden. And those are, you know, that kind of real time um, transference of experience um, is something I really appreciate about this group. So thank you so much for, for bringing that forward. Um, so what we are, um, you know, in, in just a moment, we'll be um, wrapping for today. Um, do want to um, encourage folks to my general thought with nature journaling is to try to start early and to be consistent. And there will be things that go 
wrong and it's okay. Um, but um, if you stay consistent with the journaling, journaling, it really becomes a useful tool with, with such broad and universal applicability that it can support many aspects and many aspects of your, your classroom environment and the subjects that you're teaching. And I want to just encourage people to play with that and to see what happens. Um, again, you don't need to be a scientist. You don't need to be an artist. You don't need to have... Um, what's wonderful about the nature journaling is that the, the phenomenon that is in front of you is going to provide the science. The journal itself is going to um, just be the cue for focusing and attention in ways that we human beings don't do unless we're really forced to through some activity like this. And um, it can be um, just a, a, a beautiful adjunct to your, your experiences as the year goes on. And also when you get to those sort of parent, um, those, those, those parent events, I'm being able to show them, you know, this is, you know, here, take a look at this book. This is the way that your student thinks. This is the way that your child thinks. And um, it's just such a beautiful window into that. So great tool for the classroom. Everybody, thank you all for being here. And I um, want to encourage people just to drop over to the, um, the gallery view and uh, wave each other out. Um, thank you all for being here. And I hope that this is a really wonderful and successful year for, for all of you. And uh, we are going to be here together um, to help you make this successful. Thank you all.